So let's see how these controls affect the aircraft's movement in flight. Movement of the elevator will cause the aircraft to pitch, nose down, nose up, about the aircraft's lateral axis. Movement of the ailerons will cause the aircraft to roll, wing left, wing right, about the aircraft's longitudinal axis. And movement of the aircraft's rudder will cause the aircraft to yaw, left and right, about the aircraft's vertical axis. OK, well, here we are airborne. Let's now have a look at the effects of the controls in the aircraft. First of all, the elevator. I'm now going to move the control column forward, and you'll see relative to the horizon, the nose pitches down, the horizon climbs up in the windscreen. We see a loss in height and a gain in speed. No secondary effect, no change in direction. I now move the control column towards me. You can see the nose pitching up, up and up, horizon low in the windscreen. The aircraft gains height and loses speed, but no change in direction, no secondary effect. Let's now look at the ailerons. I'm going to rotate the control column to the right. You'll see the right wing go down, the left wing go up, and you can see the horizon is no longer level in the windscreen. However, in addition to the roll, we can see that the aircraft is yawing to the right. And if I relax the back pressure on the control column, the nose pitches down, and the aircraft enters what we describe as a spiral descent, losing height, gaining speed. And of course, the same will occur when I rotate the control column to the left. To bring the wings level, control column left, and there we are, wings level again. Let's now look at the effects of the rudder. I'm now going to press the left rudder pedal, check that we're clear first of all. So left rudder pedal, you can see the nose yaws to the left, the aircraft rolls to the left, and eventually enters the spiral dive to the left. And the same will occur when I press the right rudder pedal. Wings level now, and there we are, returned again to straight and level. Let's now have a look at the effects of power. I'm now going to increase to full power, and note what happens to the nose position relative to the horizon. Here we go. Full power is being applied. Note the nose of the aircraft pitches up, and yours and rolls to the left. Returning the aircraft back to straight and level flight, we'll then have a look at what happens when we reduce the power. So here we are again, straight and level. I'm going to reduce the power. Note the nose of the aircraft pitches down, yours, and rolls to the right. And recovering back to straight and level flight. Good, so that's the effects of the power. And now on this aircraft, let's have a look at the effects of flap. Here we are again, straight level 2,000 feet within the flap limiting range. I'm selecting one stage of flap and note what happens to the nose of the aircraft. One, two, three, a very abrupt change in attitude, nose pitches up. Returning the aircraft back to straight level flight. 2,200 feet. What happens when I reduce the flap? Flap now going up. One, two, three, and likewise the nose pitches down. So when we change power, or when we change the flap position, we must be aware of what effect this has on the aircraft, be ready for it, and move the control column accordingly in order to maintain the aircraft in exactly the same condition we require it to be in.